Hi, and welcome to using sources and avoiding plagiarism. I would like this to be as interactive as possible. So where there are activities, please try and take part. Um, the answers will be on the following slide. Let's get started. Let's start by discussing what plagiarism actually is. It's defined as the practice of taking somebody else's work or ideas and passing them off as your own. Plagiarism is actually really simple to do. And so I thought I'd go through some examples because students often do these things without realizing that they're plagiarizing and are often quite shocked about the similarity scores and things like that. So number one, Copying text, ideas, concepts, results, stats, tables, computer programs, designs, images, pictures, sounds, anything like that without reference is plagiarism. Number two, paraphrasing another person's work with only minor changes, but keeping the meaning. And this is with or without reference is also considered plagiarism. Number three, piecing together sections of other people's work to form your own, plagiarism. Number four, submitting part of an assignment twice for separate subjects or modules is also plagiarism. And yes, self-plagiarism is definitely a thing. Number five, presenting work as your own when it's been done in collaboration with others so whether it be another student or another tutor that is also considered as plagiarism now you may be thinking um so how on earth are we meant to do anything without plagiarism well don't worry because this presentation is going to go through several different ways in which you can use sources appropriately without the fear of actually plagiarizing before moving on to using sources appropriately, it might be a good idea to have a look at Turnitin. As you know, at London Met, all work is submitted through Turnitin. Turnitin checks your work for similarity. In other words, how much of your work is similar to other texts that already exists. Essentially, this is looking at if you have plagiarized. When you submit your work, you get a similarity score and a colored bar. Blue means you literally have no matching text. This is amazing, but it's really uncommon. Green is what you're aiming for. So it's between one word and 24% of your text matching. Yellow is 25% to 49. Orange, 50% to 74. Red, 75 to 100%. Obviously, um, the less similar, the better. So if you do get a really high score or if there are chunks of your work that are directly copied, your work is sent to a casework team who are a department who deal with academic misconduct. There is a whole process in itself which can lead to reprimands such as having to retake the work at capped grade or worst case after repeated instances expulsion. But to avoid this, each module has a practice submission portal where you can test your similarity before submitting. This is highly recommended. Your submissions here do not get saved online and therefore will not contribute to similar texts in the future. Right, I think that's enough of plagiarism. Before I move on to how to use sources, there is a little activity. Okay, so in the activity, read the original text and find the version that uses the information correctly and avoids plagiarism. So original text is at the top. There are five versions. Pause the video here, have a good read and decide what version is the correct version to use. Okay, so what do you think? The correct version was version three. Why do you think this? Well, because they've kept the meaning, but they've changed the sentence structure and the words, and they've also included a reference. This is how you need to go about doing this for your work. In the following slides, we will look at ways to do this. 
Right, so there are two ways in which you can use sources in your work. The first is by using direct quotes and the second is by paraphrasing. We'll start by discussing direct quotes. A direct quote is you using someone's exact words. When doing this, you have to make it very clear that this is what you are doing. A reference is not enough. You also have to put all of the direct quote in speech marks and create a standalone paragraph for longer pieces of direct quotes. Please see the examples on the screen. The shorter quote on the left is within the sentence and within speech marks. The longer quote on the right is indented and in a standalone paragraph. Of course, they are both referenced in APA style. What is the issue with having longer quotes like the example on the right? If you thought, well, actually that's all copy text and that will produce higher similarity, you are absolutely correct. I personally like to avoid direct quotes, but there are certain times when they can be used. For example, when the original phrasing is so unique and cannot be paraphrased without changing the meaning, or when the writer has made a point so clearly or so succinctly that it cannot be improved upon or expressed more concisely. But of course, like mentioned on the previous slide, avoid using large sections of direct quotes because this will literally make it look like a cut and paste job and really drive up that similarity score. Not only that, but it takes away from you being able to really communicate your understanding and it looks really lazy as well. It looks like you couldn't be bothered to really digest what was originally said. Lastly, if you do choose to use direct quotes, please ensure that they are integrated into your writing and not just left alone to speak for themselves. Right, so the second way to appropriately use sources is by paraphrasing. This is also referred to as indirect quoting which basically means you are rewriting somebody else's ideas in your own words. But again, ensure here that is all properly referenced. Plagiarism comes about here in two ways. Firstly, by students not referencing, and secondly, by the students only partially rephrasing. So only changing a few words here and there. You have to change and rewrite the original text completely. By keeping some short phrases or distinctive words without speech marks, you are plagiarizing. I cannot emphasize enough. Please ensure that you are referencing. Bernard has created a video on APA referencing, 7th edition. It's available on WebLearn. Please watch that video. Okay, so now that you know how to avoid plagiarism, how do you actually use sources correctly? Well, as described earlier, either by direct quotes or by indirect quotes, and in addition, as a summary of the main ideas. Let's have a look at how you can actually do that. Here are some examples of a direct quote, an indirect quote, and a summary. Please pause the video here and have a good read of them. Right, so paraphrasing. The key to getting this right is your ability to change the language, the grammar and the sentence structure while keeping the meaning. So in other words, make the words your own while passing along the same message. This does take some practice and it is difficult at first, but it does get easier, I promise. I do have some tips that will help you along the way though. The first tip being use synonyms. Use words that have similar meanings. For example, instead of using help, use the word assist. Instead of using the word construct, use the word build or make. Use a thesaurus to help you, but please don't go overboard with this because it is very easy to misuse unfamiliar words. I don't know if you've ever seen that episode of Friends where Joey uses a thesaurus but yeah, it's a hot mess, so please avoid that. That being said, using one synonym is not sufficient on its own. Changing a few words here and there is not the same thing as paraphrasing, 
the entire sentence structure needs to be changed. We'll look at this in a little bit. Another thing you can do is change the word form. So, from an adjective to a noun or a noun to a verb, by doing this, you have changed the sentence structure and the organization, which helps the entire paraphrasing structure. There is an example on the screen. The original text is, accountants are expected to know tax laws. By changing the word forms, you can change it in two. There is an expectation that accountants are knowledgeable about tax laws. See the entire structure and the organisation, it's all changed. And there probably won't be much similarity here. As promised, changing sentence structure. Apart from changing word forms, another really easy way to use sources correctly is by changing between active and passive sentences. Look at the first sentence at the bottom of the screen. She counted money. This is active because she, the subject, is doing the action of counting. In passive form, she is being acted upon and so she is passive in that sentence, the sentence on the right. Does that make sense? I'll give you a few more examples. Um, children love ice cream. Active because the subject, children, are doing the action of loving ice cream. Passive would be ice cream is loved by children. There are settings in Microsoft Word that point out when you are writing in passive sentences. It basically tells you to change it up. This is a really good way of keeping track. Lastly, and again, really simple, expand words or define words. I always like to say that reports and essays should be really easy to understand. So if you find yourself in a position where you're reading an article and think that, hmm, that information would be useful for my work, but it's full of jargon, simplify it so that anyone reading it would understand it. Define all of the keywords. There's an example on the screen. Please pause and have a good read. Okay, summarizing. This literally means that you are just talking about the main points and this avoids direct quotes and paraphrasing. It's tricky because you have to digest everything that you have read and understand it. This is actually the aim and the best way forward for several reasons. It forces you to understand the meaning of what you have read and it makes you present the material in your own words. But of course, you still have to reference. Adding in your own comments to show how you have analysed the information is also key. It gets you critical analysis marks and shows the reader or the marker that you really know what you are talking about. So. Here are a few tips to help you through the process of summarising. Number one, skim through the entire text to get a general idea about what it says. Number two, identify what the main points are. You can use a highlighter to draw your attention to the main points and you can also cross out the non-relevant parts. Number three, make your own notes but make sure that these are in your own words and not verbatim. Number four, using the notes you have just written, begin to write a summary in your own words. This should now be easy because you've already written the notes in your own words, right? Number five, reread the summary. I always suggest doing this out loud because you're able to spot errors that you wouldn't see if you were reading silently. Make sure that it all makes sense and that you have covered all the important parts. Lastly, number six, remember to include a reference. So this is the final slide. On the screen, here is an example of some original text as well as a summary of the original text. Please pause and read this, but that's pretty much it for now. So. I would call on you to contact one of your academic mentors if you have any questions or if you still have any difficulties with using sources correctly. Speak soon. Bye.